to me, I saw the future. I thought like, oh, all producers will be engineers and musicians in the future. Like they'll all be able to do all three things. Cause I remember when I wanted to be, you know, like graduating high school, I wanted to study engineering and they wouldn't let me into the music schools because I didn't have an instrument. And I'd be like, I even actually have Berkeley School of Music. They sent back my application because it said like, what's your instrument? And I put turntable. What's your music? What's your major music? Hip hop. They, they sent my application back circled with a red pen. Hip hop. This is not music. Turntable. This is not an instrument. <laughs> well, let me, this is a great time because um, Ben actually brought up that you were doing all this stuff pre Pro Tools and he said ingenuity at its finest. And that's, <clears throat> I think, a great word because I was having this conversation earlier with Dame. Um, there, there is this sort of conflict uh, even now, even in the hip hop producer community, which strikes me as, as ironic, this whole, you know, producers who use loops or producers who can't play instruments versus producers who are, you know, real musicians. And you think, but this is what they used to do to us as a whole. Exactly. And now we're doing it to each other. So exactly. it's a weird conversation. How do you, especially you as the son of a quote unquote, real traditional musician. Yeah. How, how do you see that, that conflict? Yeah. I never understood the argument because it took some people like my, even my pops, right? It took him Tribe Called Quest first album to really understand. Cause he understood, he was recognizing some of the loops and being like, hold up though. That's this record. This is, that's a Gary Bart's record with the, you know what I mean? Like he would make the connection and that's when he started to see it. And for me, I was like, yo, this is actually harder to do because we're dealing, I'm dealing with 50 million things that you're just on an instrument. And if you're nice with your instrument, you just go go off. This is different. I'd be like, look, I got to find a drum, fit the tempo, put a bass line on that from this record, put a saxophone from this record, find out if it's the right key, tempo, all these things, and all on a turntable and sampler. There's no shifting and all that. So I always felt like, because... I learned in the reggae community when I learned what a producer was, right? The producer didn't play the instruments. He told the musicians what to play. So that really made me understand in hip hop because people be like, he's a producer, he's a beat maker, whatever. All of it is, in, it, it's hip hop, right? But the producer's the one who's gonna tell everyone what to play anyway. So I always felt like there's that line of like, nah, we're something special. Um, we're musicians in a whole other way. Like producers, think about producers you know. They they hear music a whole, especially hip hop. They, <laughs> it's a different decipher going on in here than even a musician. Like look how, like, you know, someone say, oh, it's easy to play hip hop. I said, no, it's hard. It's really hard actually, because you confined to the loop. You're confined to the eight bars, four bars, maybe even two bars. Can you play a two bar loop as good as the loop you, you know what I mean? Like that's to me always why the roots were ill, because that's how he looked at it to me. Quest and 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 the bass player hub, they just looked at it like that. Like, can you play the hell out of two bars for three minutes, four minutes? Because that's not that easy to do when it comes to can you keep that groove? That's the James Brown thing, right? It's like, can you keep that groove going? Don't lose it at all. You know, so I always felt like and make it communicate something. At, yes, like, yes. Somehow boil it down like, to a four bar loop. Yeah, yeah. And so I always felt like we had a different musicianship with us as far as producers and hip hop and beat makers. Um, you know, I they used to tell me it wasn't music at all. Like I used to argue and and you know, I went to school in LES in Manhattan and, and I used to argue with the music teacher about hip hop. You know what I mean? Like that a constant like the the kids would be ready for the debate every you know every couple of days because they knew it was coming with me being like yo stop trying to throw, throw these little darts at me because you know how much like you know people knew early like I was pursuing that when it wasn't like you know when you had a tape it was like what do you mean you have a tape like oh this is my tape of me DJing or whatever or scratching or whatever you know what I mean people were like man that, and then the music teacher he's hating oh that ain't music I'm like well if you listen to this and that, and you understand, like, it has all the things that you would encompass in music, the hell are you talking about? 
You know what I'm saying? Like to me, it was always a foolish argument because to say that what we're doing is not music, that's like, I don't know, that's like a slap in the face to music. You know what I'm saying? Like we're actually the ones that recycle the music and make it new and fresh again. That's always been hip hop's, you know, whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? Like we always take the old joint and put it and make it brand new again. The ultimate recycle, I used to say. You know what I mean? Like hip hop's the ultimate recycle. 